What's up guys, Justin here with bcgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out a brand new add-on for Blender specifically designed to help you create brick structures and brick walls. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Trowel is an add-on for Blender designed to help you generate brick walls. So um, not only does it have the ability to actually generate brick walls, it also gives you the ability to do different like masking effects. Um, it's really good at creating openings and other things like that. It's built on top of geometry nodes. So there's a lot of different things that you can kind of edit and adjust. I will link to this in the notes down below if you wanna check it out. One thing to note is at least in the short term, um, you can get this for 25% off with the code TROWL25. But let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that it works. So when you first install this, it comes with two add-ons that you need to install. Um, you'll get two files and all you need to do is just make sure that you install the add mesh trowel add-on and the node, which is the trowel core and enable both of them. And so the way this is gonna work is this is gonna create a little tab on the right-hand side of your page. So um, if you don't see that, just tap the N letter on your keyboard um, in order to pop that out. But when you click on it, notice what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you the ability to use different kinds of bricks. So for example, we've got United States brick and it's got your modular, your standard and your jumbo. Um, if we were to go to United States CMU, that's gonna have like your CMU block. Um, so like your block walls, other things like that. And then there's a number of other kinds of um, bricks and blocks from other locations as well. And so once you do that, what you wanna do is you wanna pick the kind of brick that you wanna use. So in this case, we're just gonna go with a modular brick. And so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna click on the build set button. What the build set button is gonna do is that's going to generate your bricks that it's going to use um, in order to create bricks inside of your model. So you can see how these all show up here. Now you can edit and adjust these. I don't wanna to get too far into that right now, but you can bring in custom bricks. You could also use like one click damage um, in order to add damage to these bricks, but we're not gonna to worry too much about that for right now. What we will wanna do right now is we want to come in here and add some brick to the shape. And so notice how there's different kinds of bonds in here. The bond is the way that the brick stacks in the real world. So like for example, a stack bond, if I was to select this and click on lay bricks, is going to take those bricks and it's going to just set them up in this stack bond, right? They're just stacked on top of each other. Now, um, if you were to select a running bond, that's probably more like you, what you would usually expect um, from bricks. So you can see how those bricks in here are going to have kind of that alternating look. Now, one thing you might notice about this, if you take a look at it, is some of these bricks aren't being placed quite properly over here. That specifically has to do with um, the size of your object. Um, and what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to select this and you're gonna have to scale it a little bit. So notice how if I scale this up and down, it's going to adjust that spacing. Now in this case, this actually looks okay on this side right here. And let's go ahead and change this to a wireframe so you can actually see the bricks. But it looks okay over here, so you would just wanna take this object right here and just do an S and then scale it on the X axis. And notice how when I scale it on the X axis, that's going to um, adjust the, the spacing in here like this. That's something that I hope um, we might see as part of like a geometry node setup in the future instead of you having to scale it. But you can come in here and you can scale this up on the Z axis a little bit in order to get it to align with your wall. So I've got my running bond right here. And then let's say I wanted to use the common bond. I could just select the common bond right here and use that in order to set my spacing over here. And I'm gonna go ahead and scale this again just a little bit. So we'll scale it on the Y axis. In order to set our spacing here, we'll scale it on the X axis in order to get our spacing the way that we want over here. So you can see how adding those bricks in here is really easy. Okay, and so one thing to note about this is notice that whenever you bring in one of these collections, right, it actually comes in with multiple different collections. So like for example, I brought in these CMU blocks right here and I've made some adjustments. But notice how um, it basically brings in those CMU blocks or it calls it CMU bricks. Notice how it brings in a low poly group right here, which is just the blocks on the end here. And then it also brings in a high poly group 
right here. And so basically, if you use the high poly group, it's going to repeat all of these different blocks in here instead of just the one. Um, and when you do that, um, basically what you need to do is you need to go into the geometry node setup, which we're gonna look at a little bit more, but notice how these are my low poly blocks, these are my high poly blocks, and I've specified that collection. Well, if I go into the geometry node setup for this, there's going to be a checkbox for use high poly. And so notice how if I check this box right here for use high poly, that's going to use those blocks that I'd selected instead of just using um, instead of just using the one block on the end here. And so let's say that you were to come in here and you were to select these blocks like this, and then use um, VFX Guide's one-click damage add-on. So if I click on Make Damage, notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna add that damage. Well, then if I was to go to my geometry nodes and I was to check the box for high poly, notice how you see that damage in here because it's using those high poly um, blocks instead of the low poly blocks. So um, it's fairly easy to actually swap some of this out. Note that you would probably wanna add damage to all of the different blocks that were in there because notice how these are pretty smooth as opposed to these other ones that aren't. All right, so one of the cool things about this tool is the way that it works with um, the way that it works with Booleans to create openings. We'll go ahead and add our bricks right here. There we go. So now we've got our bricks in our space. I'm gonna go ahead and scale them just a bit so that my spacing isn't quite so big. But basically what that's done is that's come in here and that's added bricks to all of the, uh, the whole wall in here. Well now, what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a shift A and we're gonna add a cube. I'm gonna scale that cube out a little bit. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a Boolean with that cube. So the way that we can do that is just to go into your, um, go into your object properties, turn the visual display to wire. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that Boolean and I'm going to put it in a collection. And in this case, I'm just gonna create a collection called Booleans. So we'll just right click on our scene, create a collection called Booleans, and we're gonna drag this cube into that. There we go, so now, what we wanna do is we wanna jump into the geometry nodes setup. Um, Cause a lot of this is still done with geometry nodes. There's not really anything, um, there's not really anything you can adjust over here. You need to go actually into the node setup, at least for right now. So you can click the plus button and add a geometry nodes workspace. Um, I've already done that. So we're just gonna jump over there. And so let's go ahead and let's take a look at this wall. And so when we select this wall, notice how there's currently a geometry node setup down here generating our wall. Well, there's a node in here for Boolean Geo in, and we just wanna add, and we just wanna add a collection info node right here. And we want to select our Booleans collection. We can go ahead and drag instances in here. Note that you are going to want to check the box for relative um, so that this actually follows your box or your blocks around. And so notice how, and again, I'm gonna to toggle my wireframe on so you can see this. Notice how this is going to remove the blocks wherever um, this Boolean goes like this. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hide the block behind it. So notice how as we adjust this, this is removing blocks, but it's doing it on like a per block basis, right? Because this is basically repeating blocks over and over again. And so that's gonna get important in a second because it has to do with what the ends do. So if we click on this, notice how there's actually some options in here. And we're gonna check the box for color split preview and go to material preview mode, just cause that's gonna help us in a second. But notice how there's options down here for like Boolean ends like this. So if I check this box, notice how it's gonna give me the ability um, to see what the Boolean ends is trying to do in here. So notice how this turns green and this is just showing you that it's interacting with those surfaces. Well, one thing that you need to know with this is your Boolean needs to be very close to where the end of a block would go. So this recognizes where to actually do the cut and um, actually kind of close this out. So I'm just gonna tab into edit mode and I'm just gonna take this face and I'm just going to move it just a little bit and notice how when I do that, that's gonna go ahead and that's going to try to cut these off in the proper location. And so I'm gonna do the same thing over here and you just wanna get it close to the end of a brick. And so when you do that, then you can check the box for A1 and A2 alternate. And so notice what that's doing is that's actually filling this in with a block 
right here. So um, there's a little bit of manual work to get your Booleans where you want them to be, but it's not really especially difficult to get that to work. And then what's cool about this is this is live, so I can move this up. Again, notice how you kind of want that to align in here with your different uh, with your different blocks. So you might have to do a little bit of adjustment in order to get that to work. But because this is in a collection, notice what I can do is I can adjust or I can duplicate this in order to create multiple holes in my model. And again, notice how I'm having to adjust this just a tad in order to get these to work. But again, not especially difficult. And so one cool thing that comes along with this, and I'm hoping for a little bit more documentation on this a little bit later, there is a pretty good tutorial video from VFX Guide that kind of walks you through some of this um, a little later on. Um, but there are but there are some additional nodes that come along with this. So like for example, if I do a shift A, notice how this builds in some geometry nodes setups in here that we can use. And these do a bunch of different things. So um, for example, on this first one, let's say that we wanted to add a noise mask to it. So I'm just gonna add this into the node setup. Well, notice what that's gonna do. So that's going to add noise to where your bricks are being placed. And maybe it's a good idea for me to go ahead and give some depth to this just so you can kind of see the way that this might look. But what this allows you to do is this allows you to add noise as well as like scale and amount of noise in here. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you the ability um, to add like damage to these walls. So notice how I can use the noise in order to adjust the position as well as other things like that. So again, adjusting the scale in order to quickly add damage to these walls. So you've got the noise, you've also got some other masks in here, like a height mask. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me the ability to mask out like the height of my wall, like this. This one you're gonna wanna play around with a little bit because notice how you can get these kind of like floating bricks in here. That, that's actually not too bad if you've got another wall behind it because it kind of looks like the bricks have kind of like flaked off. Um, but you do have multiple different noise setups. But then there's also some other modifiers in here that allow you to do things like random position and random ro rotation. So if I drop a random rotation in here like this and I adjust the amount and we're going to go ahead and set this probably on the X right here. But notice what that does is that's going to add some randomization in here. And so when you adjust things like the amount and the seed, and there's only so much that you can do in here, it kind of limits you, which is good. And so notice what that's gonna do is that's gonna add a random rotation to your bricks like this. So you've also got some other randomization modifiers. So things like a little bit of random position. So if you wanna drop random position in here and we could do this on maybe like the X or the Y axis, but this is gonna make it so these aren't like uniform in your wall, right? So if you wanna make this like really, um, you wanna give this a fair amount of in and out, you can do that using this tool right here. So you can add randomization to your objects as well. And again, note that this is compatible with your ends right here. So I'm gonna turn on my color split preview. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up like this. But notice how if I come in here and adjust this, that you are able to add those ends in here just like this. So leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this tool. I'm excited to see where this goes, especially with some new features and some bells and whistles. I could see this being like the brick tool for Blender, but I'd love to hear what you think in the comments down below. I'll link to that on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.